By definition, a population is the set of all elements of interest in a particular study. Now, a sample is just a subset of this population. I'll explain this with an example. If we were interested in measuring something in the forest, um, we were interested in the trees in that particular forest, then all of the trees in that forest would be our population, where a sample would just be a subset of those trees. Another example would be if we were interested in something to do with female students. Now our population isn't students, it would be all the female students and a sample would be a subset of the female students. When analyzing data there are two important steps. The first step is descriptive statistics. Now in descriptive statistics we are making summaries of our data that we've collected so anything tabular, graphical or numerical can be seen as a summary. The second important step is inferential statistics. There we are using the data that we have now summarized um, to make assumptions about data we haven't actually observed. So that's where our sample comes in. Now we can do descriptive statistics on a population as well because we can obviously draw a table or a graph or do a numerical summary of population data too. Inferential statistics, however, always makes use of what we've observed in the sample to make some estimate or assumption about what's happening in the population. So we're using data that we've observed to make assumptions about data we have not yet observed. An example of this would be if we were doing a study on different horses and we wanted to see what the most common color for horses are. If we, for instance, took a sample of 100 horses and we found that 70 of them were chestnut, we can easily say that 70% of the horses in our sample were chestnut in color. Now, if we expand that to the population and we said 70% of horses are chestnuts, then we are making an assumption about animals we haven't yet observed. So that is making an inference. So the basic idea with statistics is that we start with a population that we're interested in. We want to observe something there. But we can't observe the population, so we'll take a sample. But every sample we take uh, would be different. We can't expect our samples to, to have exactly the same elements in there. So there will be variation within each sample. Our results will not be exactly the same. Probability theory helps us to bridge this gap between descriptive and inferential stats by measuring the specific variation. We will look at this a little bit later in this course. So we will start with a population. And from a population, we draw a sample. This sample is then used to make inferences about the population. Statistics is crucial in the research process. There are five steps involved in the research process, namely planning, data collection, editing and coding of data, data analysis and conclusions. The planning phase is crucial to your success. If you do not clearly plan what you need, you won't end up with the right information, your information might not be valid even. So you need to have very clear objective in mind when you do your planning. You need to make sure that you only get the relevant information. If you gave someone a questionnaire with 500 questions in there and you're actually only interested in 10 of them, then you're not going to get very good information. People will get annoyed. They won't be able to give you the correct information. To save time and cost, the sample is usually used. So we need to also design a suitable sampling method in our planning phase. Otherwise, our results might be biased as well. Now the data collection, if the, our planning was pro done properly, we shouldn't have any problems here. It should be fairly simple, although you should always expect to run into problems with the sampling as well. Um, nothing in life is simple. You might be looking for a sample element that might not be available at that point. So you need to consider this very carefully in your planning phase as well. Now the time frame of your um, sampling will depend on your study. Um, some studies take much longer than others to complete, so that is also uh, it also needs to be considered in your planning phase. Now, the editing and coding of your data should be done to eliminate obvious errors. If someone gave their height as 177 meters, you could expect that they probably just forgot to put the dot in between one, the one and the seven. So you need to look very carefully at your data when you enter it. 
coding can be very useful in your analysis of the data um, especially if you're using a computer it's also very time saving if you uh, code your data when entering it instead of entering full sentences you might just enter a code like an a or a b or a c or a d obviously you need to ve keep very good track of what each of your codes mean now in analysis that is a critical step where statistics is very involved so we use different statistical techniques to analyze our data depending on the type of data um, and what we actually hope to observe in here. We're using tables, we can use graphs, we can use numerical summaries. And then these summaries can be used to make inferences on the population based on the descriptive study that we've performed. This is only a first step though. There are more advanced techniques that you can use in statistics, but we usually start every study with a descriptive study because we need to be able to understand our data and get a feel for what's going on in this sample and the population. Now our conclusions, that is one of the most important things. If you're not going to make conclusions, then why bother? So you uh, write a report usually and summarize what you have observed in your data. This conclusion should summarize also what's um, what your research questions were asking so you should make sure that any questions you have are answered if possible there usually um, will be more questions in the end than you started with so you can expect that as you're analyzing your data and writing up your conclusions you might actually come up with new questions that you want to answer so in this case you will just start with a new study or continue with your study and collect more data so the process carries on and on and on like in a loop.